Hi, my name is Melanie Pabstel, and I'm a program officer with the Discovery Grants program at NSERC. This presentation will include important information relevant to completing the full application stage of the Discovery Grants application on the research portal. In this demonstration, we will present the research portal, how it works, and some key strategic recommendations. Please start by logging on to the research portal. If you have forgotten your password, do not create a new account. Use the Forgot My Password function and an email will be sent to you with new login information. This must be the same account that you submitted your notification of intent. If you already have a portal account but can't remember which email you used, please do not create a new account. Contact NSERC instead and we will help you retrieve your information. The email contact is webapp at ncrsngcca Let's start with the collection of self-identification data. Click on Profile, then User Profile to get to the screen. You may have completed this upon submitting your NOI. Please update this if necessary. The collection of self-identification data is driven by the Government of Canada's commitment to equity, diversity, and inclusion in the federal research enterprise. Please know that self-identification information is not shared with members or reviewers. It is collected for the purposes of program operations, including the op recruitment of external individuals for merit review processes and, where applicable, planning, performance measurement, monitoring, evaluation, and audits. It may also be used in aggregate to report to government or the, to the public. Self-identification information will be reported in a format that ensures protection of the identity of any individual. The user profile in the research portal has a series of questions asking your age and how you self-identify with respect to gender, Indigenous identity, status as a person with a disability, and whether you are a member of a visible minority in Canada. Applicants have the option of selecting I prefer not to answer to all questions. Applicants will be asked these self-identification questions each time they submit an application and the user profile will be pre-populated with your last responses. You can change your information with each submission. Now we'll create our application. Go back to the welcome page. First, click on Create Application to display your options. There is a list of applications for which you can select Create. This is also where the deadline dates are indicated. You'll also be see below the NOI that you submitted. You may have internal deadlines within your institution. Please check with your institution's research grants office. Click Create next to Discovery Grants Program Individual. You'll see the NOI that was submitted that will form the basis of your application. Click on Select to move from the NOI phase to the application phase. Please be aware there are two rows. One is your application and one is your NOI from before. Click Open for the entry that corresponds to your application. We will now go into the specifics of the information required for the research portal at the full application stage. On the overview page, at the very top, you will find a countdown until the submission date. Yellow triangles indicate a module has not been completed. You must go in, complete, then save and validate each section before you are able to submit. For the reviewer exclusion section, even if you do not identify anyone to exclude, you must save and validate. Each section must be completed or have a green check mark. You will not be able to submit your application if there is incomplete information. We'll start by focusing on the specific modules of the application for the DG program you will see 10 sections to complete under Module Status. For navigation purposes, you will find on the side a table of contents with all the sections to be completed. This is an easy way to navigate between modules in the portal. Let's begin with the Identification module. This, is, this information is generated from the user profile information. You should always double check that the information in this module is accurate and up to date. You may update the title of your application from the NOI stage. You'll be asked in this module whether you want to be considered for the DND slash NSERC Discovery Grant Supplement or the Northern Research Supplements. You'll also be asked in this module whether you entered one or more eligible leaves of absences in your Canadian Common CV for this application. If you answer yes to this question, you'll be asked to submit an additional attachment on supplemental contributions. Please refer to the instructions for more details. In the Identification section, select your Application Category. If the Early Career Researcher category is selected, the explanation box will appear. Early Career Researchers are applicants who have held an independent academic position for five years or less. 
For example, to be classified as an ECR, a researcher submitting an NOI this August would have been hired on or after July 1st, five years earlier. In the box, you must explain the eligibility of your first appointment, highlighting the independent research and supervisory components. Applicants who select ECR as their applicant category must also include a list of all positions found in their CCV that meet NSERC's requirements for an independent academic position, in addition to explaining how they meet the ECR definition. An independent academic position is a position that is a university faculty appointment, tenured or non-tenured, and requires that the researcher engages in research that is not under the direction of another individual, and authorizes the researcher to supervise or co-supervise the research of students registered in an undergraduate or graduate degree program or postdoctoral fellows. Applicants should have in mind the position that will receive the DG grant when responding to the questions of the profile. For all specific questions or individual cases, please use resgrant at ncrsng.gc.ca. How do I answer the following questions? I hold an academic appointment at an eligible Canadian post-secondary institution. Answer yes, if you are already in position. No, if you have a firm offer or will have an offer by mid-December, but have not started yet. If your position is still pending approval at the time of application, it must be finalized and confirmed in writing to NSERC within six weeks following the application deadline. I will hold an academic appointment at an eligible Canadian post-secondary institution. Answer yes if you have a firm offer or will have by mid-December, but have not started yet. If your position is still pending approval at the time of application, it must be finalized and confirmed in writing to NSERC within six weeks following the application deadline. Answer no if you are already in position. Expected start date. If you answered yes to the previous question, you are required to enter the day you are starting your position. Official title of position. Enter the title for, of the position for which you are applying from. If your title is not in the dropdown, use free form option and type in the exact title of position. Refer to your letter of offer. Department division. Enter your department division. If your department is not available, use head office siège social. The position I currently hold or will hold is a tenured tenure track or lifetime professor emeritus at an eligible Canadian university. Simply answer yes or no, depending on your position. Refer to your letter of offer. You must hold or have a firm offer of an academic appointment at an eligible Canadian university at the time of application. For the duration of the award, you must hold such a position. The position I currently hold or will hold is an indeterminate, i.e. with no end date, academic position with an eligible Canadian university other than tenured, tenure track, or lifetime professor emeritus. Simply answer yes or no, depending on your position refer to your letter of offer. You must hold or have a firm offer of an academic appointment at an eligible Canadian university at the time of application. For the duration of the award, you must hold such a position. The position I currently hold or will hold is a term or contract academic position of no less than three years at an eligible Canadian university. Simply answer yes or no, depending on your position. Refer to your letter of offer. Your term or contract position of no less than three years. If your term ends before your grant, you are still eligible. NSERC follows up every year before releasing the next installment to ensure your term is renewed for another three years. Note that three years plus a one-year renewal does not make you eligible. Each term needs to be no less than three years. You must hold or have a firm offer of an academic appointment at an eligible Canadian university at the time of application. For the duration of the award, you must hold such a position. If your offer of a position is still pending approval at the time of application, it must be finalized and confirmed in writing to NSERC within six weeks following the application deadline. In addition to the academic position named above, I hold a remunerated position at an eligible Canadian institution. Simply answer yes or no, depending on your situation. This information is captured to determine if your salary is paid from other agency funds. In addition to the academic position named above, I hold a position outside the university sector. Simply answer yes or no, depending on your situation. This information is captured to determine if your salary is paid from other agency funds. I hold a position outside of Canada. 
Simply answer yes or no, depending on your situation. You are allowed to hold a position outside of Canada, as long as your eligible position is at an eligible Canadian institution. I am enrolled in a graduate program in the natural sciences or engineering, or I hold a postdoctoral position. Simply answer yes or no, depending on your situation. As per our eligibility criteria, you may not simultaneously hold an award and be enrolled in a graduate program in the natural sciences or engineering, or hold a postdoctoral fellow position in any discipline. Before any funds can be released on an NSERC grant, the applicants must take up their faculty position and complete all degree requirements. For discovery grants, this can be no later than September 1st of the year of the award. Let's move on to the summary of the proposal module. The summary is intended to explain the proposal in language that the public can understand. Using simple terms, briefly describe the nature of the work to be done. Indicate why and to whom the research is important, and the anticipated outcomes, and how the research field and Canada will benefit. This plain language summary will be available to the public if your proposal is funded. A note that the shortcut Control V to paste on the research portal does not work. Instead, use the icon circled in green on this screen. A dialog box will pop up that will accept copy and paste functions. The number of remaining characters is indicated above the text box. A translated summary of your proposal can be included. Click to save and validate. Click save and next to proceed. Let's move on to the proposal expenditures module. Enter your proposed budget for the five years of the Discovery Grants program. Under salaries and benefits, select the type of students. For each type, enter the number of students to be supported. Enter the total amount required to support this type of student. For example, enter 40,000 if there are two master's students who receive 20,000 each. Repeat for the required years. If necessary, add a row to add a type of student. Right underneath are non-student salaries and benefits. Enter the type of non-student as necessary. Enter the number of non-students. Enter the total no amount or the type of non-student. Repeat this step for the rest of the entries broken down by year. Calculate totals button. It is important to verify the total amount requested from NSERC at the very bottom of the screen. Cannot save in next if the totals haven't been calculated. Click save and validate at the bottom. Click Save and Next to proceed. If there are cash contributions from industry, university, or other sources, the total amount requested from NSERC is calculated automatically by subtracting the total cash contributions from the total proposed expenditures. Let's move on to the Relationship to Other Research Support module. Please follow the instructions. Input appropriate information in the freeform box up to 12,000 characters to clearly explain funding applied for or held from other sources. For support from the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, CIHR, and or the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, SHRC, remember to upload an attachment with summary and budget pages. Let's move on to the HQP Training Plan module. In this module, describe your plans for training highly qualified personnel. Note that the character limit has increased to 9,000 characters for competition year 2021. Click Save and Validate. Click Save and Next to proceed. Let's move on to the past contributions to HQP training module. In this module, describe your past contributions to the training of highly qualified personnel. Note that the character limit has increased to 6,000 characters for competition year 2021. Click Save and Validate. Click Save and Next to proceed. Let's move on to the most significant contribution module. A limit of 9,000 characters is allowed in the text box. Describe up to five of your most significant contributions to research and or to practical applications over the last six years. Contributions made more than six years ago that are having impact now, for example, exploitation of patent, inclu inclusion in a code, etc., may be described in this section only. A contribution does not have to be a single publication or report. For example, a group of publications on a specific subject could be discussed as one contribution. You may include the full reference to your contributions in this text box or provide the appropriate reference to your NSERC CCV. Let's move on to the additional information on contributions module. A limit of 3,000 characters is allowed in the text box. You can provide an explanation for the contributions listed in your NSERC CCV. Such details may include the nature of collaborations with other researchers, 
the rationale or practice used for the order of authors in pu the publications listed and the inclusion of students in the list of authors, your role in joint publications, the reason for selecting certain venues, journals, conferences for publications and particular features of the venues, for example, target audiences, review procedures, the impact or potential impact of patents and technology transfer, the nature of industrially relevant R&D activities, the significance of technical reports, attestation to the nature and the significance of confidential technical and internal reports, original research reported in books or technical reports. Let's move on to the activity details module. In this module, you'll be asked to answer questions regarding certification requirements and environmental impact. You can consult linked, linked acts and regulations for clarification. Depending on your answers, additional parts may, might need to be filled out. Select your research subject codes, select your area of application codes. Keywords will be pre-populated from the NOI and can be modified. Click Save and Validate, click Save and Next to proceed. Let's go back to the welcome page. We'll show you how to upload the required attachments. Navigate to the Attachments section, click Attach. We'll use propo the proposal as an example. The process is the same for all attachments. Type the title of your attachment, click Browse to select your attachment on your computer, find your file and select it, click Upload to attach your file, the attachment uploaded, you can upload another file to replace the attachment if you need to make changes. Click to back to application overview. We'll now show you how to upload your CCV. Let's switch over to the CCV website to obtain our CCV confirmation number. Log into your CCV, click CV, and then click funding. Select NSERC for funding source and NSERC underscore researcher for CV type. Click load. When you're done updating your CCV, click Submit at the top. Please read the consent information and click I agree. If successful, it will say that your CV has been submitted. The CCV has not been linked to your application just yet. You will see a seven digit number generated. Please keep this number and go back to your application in the research portal. Back in the application overview page, scroll down to Canadian Common CVs Attach and click Attach. You will see a blank field where you need to enter your validated CCV confirmation number. Enter your confirmation number and press upload. The page will refresh. You will see CCV has been uploaded and you will see the name of the file below that. You can click here to view the version that was uploaded. You should view the file to ensure the correct version was uploaded. You also have the option to delete the file and re-upload another. This can be done at any time before submitting the application through the research portal. Now, if I go back to my application homepage, I will see that the CCV requirements have been completed, which is indicated by the green check mark. Once all of these modules are complete, we strongly suggest previewing your application and CCV before submitting. When you are in your application profile, there is a button on the bottom right hand side, export application to PDF. You should also export your application to PDF and save it for your records for reference. The portal is not an archive or a repository and it is cleaned once a year. Once your application is complete and ready for submission, the Submit button will appear. For the full application, since RGO approval is required, pressing Submit will send the application to the queue of your Research Grants Office. From there, the Research Grants Officer can return the application to you or submit it to NSERC. Once it is submitted to NSERC, you cannot make changes. NSERC does not return applications for updates after submission by the RGO. This ends our presentation on the Research Portal. Thanks for watching.